I think there's a sunken ship right over here. Like that looks like a sunken ship. That was a, I mean, that was a good sized boat. Yeah. All right, let's see what's in this sunken ship, shall we? All right, it's time to film a fishing episode look, in Key Largo, look, baby. Look, he's doing an intro. Yeah, look at look who we got over here. Hey, I'm back. We got Dan. You thought I was gone. <laughs> it's been like a month since we fished together. Yeah, it's been a long time, man. It's been a while. So I think we're overdue for some vertical jigging. We're also going to do some lobster scouting, and hopefully we're going to put some meat on the boat. So it's beautiful out, except for the fact that those clouds are starting to form up over there. And you know, whenever I'm with you and you're with me. Death is always imminent. <laughs> Death is. We're, we like to ride the close. sharp edge of Very close. alive and dead. <laughs> yeah, there's the clouds. I think we'll be okay. All right, let's turn her on. Yes. Woo, she's running. Time to set sail. clear you can see there's some sand there some grass on this side you can kind of see this ledge right here and October 6th is just a couple days away so we want to find a couple of lobster spots so we're ready to catch some lobsters we're gonna hop in the water I'll bring my GoPro down there with me hopefully we find some and then we'll head offshore and do a little bit of vertical jigging maybe some deep dropping I did bring the electric reel the Kraken well, let's get a little wet first let's get cracking let's get cracking that's what Dan said crack how about it Molson, Molson lobster shell right there. They, uh, that's how they grow. They shed their skin. Yeah, they crawl out of it. So that's a molson shell. Not a dead lobster. Got a big old thunderstorm coming. Typical, absolutely typical. We got Dan down there looking around for some lobsters. Found a couple nice edges, pretty close to land actually. So that's cool. All right, we did some lobster scouting. We we didn't find too many. We found some ledges, but uh, I think we found enough lobsters to where we should limit out on opening day. But I think there's a sunken ship right over here. Like that looks like a sunken ship. Something going, yeah, 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 yeah. That's something. All right, let's check. That's big. That's, it looks like a big bow of a boat. Oh, that looks like a boat, all right. That was a, I mean, that was a good sized boat. Yeah, it's still got the engine on it. And it's got, look, it's got, it's got the bow sticking out. I bet she's got everything on that. Yeah. Damn, look at that, that a straight up. I kind of want to swim up under it and see if there's a Yeti cooler or something in there. Uh, I think, uh, to the victor go to the sport. <laughs> we get a <laughs> I've always wanted a new cooler. All right, let's see what's in this sunken ship, shall we? Slip and slide.
Well, that boat was crazy. If I had to take a guess, I'd say somebody sunk during mini season because it was pretty uh, stormy that day. But uh, we just ran the reefs right over there. You could see Molasses Reef Tower kind of off in the distance. We're gonna be in like 150 to 200 feet right now. Kind of on some reefy bottom out here. Boy, is it beautiful out here. Look at that. And this storm missed us. You can see it's raining right back there, but it is slick calm out here. Quiet, beautiful. Dan's gonna drop down a vertical jig. Hey, I'm going rock fishing. Dan's going rock fishing. We'll see if Dan pulls up a rock, but. <laughs> gotta get me a rock. I'm gonna set up the the PC Fun Kraken X electric reel with uh, the South Florida Fish Channel chicken rig on it, and I'm gonna put some barracuda chunks on there. And check this out with the battery. It attaches to the rod. I actually just figured this out. I don't know how I didn't know this <laughs> before, but you can just plug it right in. Boom, battery. It's Velcroed on and then it just plugs right in the back of it. There she is. She's turned on, ready to go. All right, Dan is already vertical jigging. Probably too shallow for a tuna, right? Yeah, there could be. Look, we were marking fish up at 20 feet. Yeah. There's, so, there's something up there at 20 feet. We're not actually on the right spot right now, but yeah, gonna... I have a bag of barracuda chunks from a previous trip, and I'm going to put these barracuda chunks on the chicken rig. So we got our Kraken X. We have a swivel going to the chicken rig. One, two, three, four, five hooks to uh, some weights. Ooh, I hear thunder. You know, I hope I didn't speak too early when I said we avoided the storms today. <laughs> Why does it keep getting bigger? Yeah. Drop in the uh, the bull testicles. Yep. These are two 24 ounce Cow weights. All right, we drop this in. Send her on down. Yeah, come get your jig. We're marking fish on the bottom. I'll show you guys what the bottom looks like here in a second. Okay, we are on the bottom. Look at this. Look at that. That's a lot of fish down there. We're only in 110 feet, so this is actually like kind of way too shallow, but maybe we'll get lucky. I need to be on your side. You're on the right side. Yeah, it would be right because we drifted very quickly. I think I got a fish. I wouldn't be surprised with all that stuff down there. I don't know, I can't tell. I'm gonna drop it back down again. A little bit, but I think we dropped too late. I, I think I got to go a lot further ahead of this spot because we got a ripping tide. Yeah. Uh -oh. I got you. Oh, you got me. I don't know how that happened. I got me a Don. Nice. That's actually a great catch. Oh, I got a fish. I think, I mean, I, I thought we had a fish. Pretty. Oh, 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 oh. That looks like a fish. All right, let's see what we done got or so. This reel, I really like this reel. I'm not gonna lie. It's, <laughs> Dan wants one. I want one. Dan wants one. There's a fish on there. Oh, a mangrove snapper. A mangrove snapper. <laughs> a keeper too. A mangrove snapper in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> this might be my first mangrove snapper on the deep drop. I am not complaining at all. Great eating fish. Nice sandwich right there. Yep. On the Barracuda. Okay, uh, mangrove snapper need to be 12 inches. Or t is it 10 inches? 10 or 12? I think what we do is we don't go with anything less. Yeah, we, even if it was 12, we would send it back. Because of that. Okay, he's over 12. All right. So he's good to go. Nice, food in the box. Grocery shop. Yeah, grocery shop. Grocery. All right, I feel good about this next drop. That was a practice drop. Oh, yeah. All right, we just drove back up current and we should be drifting right over this spot again. It's not even really a spot, it's more of like a whole area where you can try to catch these fish on the bottom. As soon as we get one mark, I'm dropping mine down. Okay. Yeah, right, see, so, yeah, I was getting a little bumpy down there. Yeah. There's no fish yet. Come on, fishies. Where are you? Show yourself. Okay, I think any second they're about to yeah. just light up the screen. Yeah. This has got to be go, a thermocline. Oh, go, yep, we're fish. We're marking fish. All right. <laughs> Drop them down. <laughs> yeah. Cow balls going down. Cow balls going in. Cow balls going down. Yep. Cow balls in. Going down fast. Oh, I'm on the bottom. I'll give it some extra line. Let's see what the bottom. Oh, my God. The bottom is lit up. There's fish down there. I'm getting bit. I don't know if I have a fish on or not, but I'm gonna bring mine up. We're still marking stuff, but 
I could keep us like a little bit in gear, maybe. I don't know. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah, I kind of had a feeling because there were some nibbles, but not enough. Yeah, you need something that mangrove snapper gonna want. All right, drop number three. Big boom boom. Going down. Going down already? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop mine already, but you know, I'm impatient. Whoever gets to the bottom first gets the bigger fish. Oh, it's gonna be you, man. You got, you got big cow balls on. Big old, yeah, them big old cow balls are gonna get me down there quick. <laughs> oh yeah, we're marking fish good right now. I got fish. I got fish on mine. Come on. I wish I had squid because that the barracuda yeah. chunks. Wow, I cannot hold bottom. The current is ripping so hard, but I thought I had something. Ooh, that was a big lightning strike. Yeah, I think that got it on camera too. Uh, Ooh, uh, that's loud. Big old thunder in the background. <laughs> the boom, boom, boom. And it's like, oh, wait for incoming. <laughs> Come on, fishies. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. Don't, don't, let, me. don't let me down. Downtown. I'm sending her down. Let's see what we got. Nothing. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nipple, though. Like, ah, I should have brought some squid. What was I thinking? Yeah, squid's the deal, bro. What was I thinking? There they are. There they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are. Like I'm bouncing off each Ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this time I'm going to put this on this side. That way I can yeah, right? that way I can run it. Yeah, we're in All gear right. right now. And I'm actually take it out of gear, drop it, and then get everything vertical. All right, so I'm going to let this go vertical, and then I'm going to try to keep it vertical. Look, at my line, my chicken rig is right in the center of all that. You can see my chicken rig going down. The bull balls make a nice line. And then, yeah. Oh my gosh, that is looking good. So yeah, I'm just going to try to keep us straight. Holy smokes, it's looking good down there. It seems like the fish don't want barracuda today. Or maybe they do, you know? We just got to put it in front of the right, the right fish. Oh man, the, the vertical jig is, or the deep chicken rig staying up, up and down very nicely. There's even slack in the line. Oh, wow. oh, look at all the fish under it. Oh my God, what is all this? Dan, you might want to drop your jig down. There could be a wahoo under that. Yep, yep, yep. We got some kind of structure with a lot of bait on it. Oh, you can smell the rain. Yep. Some kind of tarp or some kind of bag or something, but a lot of bait under it. What do we do about this storm? Well, we gotta go that way. Yeah, it yeah. almost looks like where we gotta go, we might be okay. It's still clear, yeah. The question is, which way is the storm moving? I think it's moving this way, but it's moving very like, slow. Like this, right? Like yeah, but very slow. Uh, we're not even marking any fish anymore. Yeah, Nobody wants that barracuda. We could still make it back <laughs> without being murdered by that storm. Do we call it? <laughs> All right. We got a massive storm coming our way, so we're gonna call it on the fishing a little early because we're smart. Oh, it's coming all right. I can feel it coming in there tonight. The wind is whipping it up, whipping it up. Oh my god! Fish? I got a fish! <laughs> oh. oh god. A tropical fish, a very pretty tropical. Ow! It's got some spikes. Think it's edible? I'm gonna need them plucked. He's, got... uh, he's got those teeth too. Look at those teeth. Rock eating teeth. Oh, no, no. Yeah, You're lucky, dude. Some... Oh, oh I would not want to put he's got That's like... a spike! Wow. You see that spike? Yeah, he's got one on this side oh, too. Oh, man. Pretty blues. I don't know what you are. Cool. All right, we made it back to the dock. We only took a couple of waves to the face on the way in. Did a little bit of sprinkle. It wasn't too bad, but we're back. I'm going to get the boat nice and clean, take the gear off, and then we're going to be cooking up a whole mangrove snapper. Yeah, I think we're going to cook it whole. 
sounds pretty good. All right, the boat is clean for the most part. Um, we're gonna take that mangrove snapper and right off the back of my boat, I'm going to gut him, rip his gills out and descale him. And I was just looking and check out this iguana. Just sunbathing, chilling like a villain. Hey, hey buddy, 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 buddy. So peaceful out here, then you just got me making all sorts of noises. <laughs> but um, all right, tip number one, get some gloves. It makes scaling the fish so much easier because it doesn't slip out of your hands. Kablam, just like that. Tip number two, use a sharp short knife. The shorter the knife, the more control you have over it and it makes scaling a lot easier. So I'm gonna be using my dive knife. I think this is the Spear Pro knife, already rusty. And they're so expensive, but uh, I have not found a dive knife yet that doesn't rust. If you know of one, let me know in the comments below. I could use one of them. Don't look at the donuts. Those are definitely not donuts. All right. The man of the hour. He's a fat one. He's got a, like a fat belly. You know, he's not a, a trophy stud or anything, but he's got some thickness to him, some girth and he's the perfect size for frying up whole. I'm gonna cut his tail off too so he fits in the pan better. All right, hopefully y'all will be able to see this. Oh, I almost fell in. <laughs> Let's take your knife and you wanna, ooh, he's slippery. You wanna hold him by the tail. This is why you want gloves or he'll slip out of your hand. If you do it underwater, the, uh, the scales won't get all over your boat. You see that? Just like that. So you got a nice uh, descaled fish there. Now you do want to be careful that a shark doesn't come up and grab your hand. We've all seen the video of the guy in the Everglades and that is only about 20 minutes from here. And the sharks are ruthless out here. So uh, in the Barracuda too. So you want to keep your, keep your eyes peeled. Make sure you don't get murdered. Oh, you can see all that skin is coming off real nice. We're gonna make an incision in his anus up into his mouth. So you're basically, uh, yeah, splitting him wide open like that. And then you wanna grab his guts, or his gills, I mean, and his guts and gills, oops, should all kind of just easily come out. There we have it, a fully descaled mangrove snapper, no guts, no gills. You want to rinse them in that salt water and you guys want to know something a little disturbing as i was pulling all the guts out of them there's snapper under the boat eating the guts so that makes them cannibals let me see if i can see i'm still soaking wet but we're gonna get right into the cooking because i'm hungry and this guy, I don't, there's something about a whole fried snapper that just gets me excited. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the tail off so that way he will better fit into my cast iron skillet here, which I have some oil heating up. And then we have some egg wash and some flour. So first we're gonna put flour on the fish, then put them in the egg wash. Then we're gonna coat them with some cornmeal. We're also gonna add some of the South Florida Fishing Channel sweet heat seasoning one of our favorites southforfishingchannel.com get yourself some seasonings if you want to support the channel but let's chop this guy's tail off get a nice sturdy thick knife and it should just bam there's the tail and you know who gets the tail hold on i'm going to cut a couple of slices into it nice little sliced up tail right there hey buddy yeah here that's for you. I'm also going to make just one incision across the fish so it cooks more evenly. Uh, just like that, that's all. You wanna make the nice incision right on the kind of the thickest part of the fish. So that way the thick part of the fish cooks evenly along with the thinner parts of the fish like the end of the tail. And let's get it seasoned up, actually. The way I'm gonna do this, I was gonna do flour first, but I'm gonna do the sweet heat first. So that way it really sticks to the fish. That flavor really gets on there. Put it on the inside of the fish. All right, now we'll add the flour. This is probably a very unconventional way of doing it, but uh, so be it. 
All right, we have a nice floured up fish. Ooh, look at that. I mean, is it my lucky day or is it my lucky day? So let's try to properly egg wash this, which might be a little difficult. Yeah. I'm gonna shove it in there. Get, let's get our hands in there. Let's get a little dirty with it. Oh yeah. Egg, I love egg. Mm -hmm. That is looking good. Let me wash my hands off. All right, now we're gonna try to cover this bad boy in some cornmeal. Take our cornmeal. By the way, this is Bob's Red Milk Cornmeal, medium grind. I don't know, do you guys have a favorite cornmeal? Let me know in the comments. This probably isn't the most efficient way of doing it, but eh, yeah, it's okay. That looks good. All right, you can see the oil is kind of moving around in there, so it's probably hot. We'll do a little test. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. This is gonna be a very satisfying moment. Ideally, you want enough oil to cover the entire fish so you're not just like frying half of it at once. But I'm only frying up one fish, so I didn't feel like using a ton of oil to fill that pan up. But uh, we'll just let it fry a bit. We'll flip it and it should be perfectly good. I wish I could share the smells with you guys because they're really good. Really good. <laughs> I'm so wet and so hungry. I think Elliot's hungry too. Look at him. Hey, Elliot. You hungry, buddy? I think the eyeball just popped and all that, it, it just like blew up in there, but uh, I think it's time to flip it. Oh wow, yeah. That's what I'm looking for right there. All right, I gotta take it out. It is way done. Where's my, where's my tongs? Okay, I can't find my tongs. Oh, <laughs> they're right here. I suck. No, you know what, it looks good. I was worried I overcooked it there for a second. Damn, look at that. We're gonna let it cool and then we're gonna dig in. Can it get much crispier than that? I don't think so. I think we have maxed out our crispy levels. Oh, ho, ho. there's a target right there because I was doing some indoor target practice. Don't recommend that. But this, when I fry a whole mangrove snapper, I usually love to use sweet Thai chili sauce, but I don't have any of that today. This is all very last minute plan. I do have this stuff called Wu Zhu Extra Hot Sauce Sweet Heat. It's like a, it's sweet and spicy. So I think it'll probably be pretty good. Let's just start with, oh, like the crust. Look at that crust, it's like. Okay. It's, oh, you can taste the sweet heat in there. It might be missing a little bit of salt, but I think it's okay. Ooh, white, flaky, macro snapper meat. That's what I came here for. Okay, yeah, you don't need salt with that. Oh my. Mmm, so happy right now. This is gonna make it probably really good. Just give a little drizzle. The, the bone, or the meat, just comes right off the bones. You can just scrape it off. You wanna get a little bit of the skin crunchies in there too. Mmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This tastes like, what can I compare this to? It tastes like a, like a large fish stick, but the fish is just such a clean, kind of flavorless, honestly. It's just a good texture, tastes very fresh, doesn't have like any kind of fishy flavor at all. It's just, just like very fresh fish and then you have that beautiful crispy layer. And, and this is a thick crispy layer. I really enjoy this. I, I usually don't put the whole fish in the egg wash, but I think from now on I'm gonna do it because this crust is immaculate. It adds a nice crunchy texture to the soft white fish. So it's like the perfect combination. You can see the ribs here. I pretty much just hollowed this side out. And it's really fun to cook a whole fish because you can just, like, you know, pick at it. You can just pick all the meat off of it. Use your fingers, get a little dirty. All right, I'm gonna finish this. But let me do a quick outro for y'all. What a beautiful day. Check it out, Elliot is laying on my deer skin. This is my deer skin that I shot this deer. 
I skinned it and I tanned the hide all by myself like 10 years ago. This is uh, one of my first does that I ever got my hands on. Delicious. We made goulash with this dough and it was like some of the best goulash I ever had. And, and I'm German, so I know my goulash pretty good. And look who we got laying on here. Hey, bud. And we also, I don't know if you guys remember this raccoon, but I did a raccoon hunting video. I skinned it and I tanned it. This is like my raccoon puppet and he's always up to no good. You see how he rubs his hands together like that? Yeah, he's up to no good. <laughs> but a uh, very soft, I was gonna turn him into a hat, but I just really enjoy the puppet. So I haven't figured out what to do with him yet. Look how excited Elliot is. Wow. Yeah, you can play with it. It's his toy now. What a crazy day though. Saw a sunken boat, found some lobsters, went offshore. We tried to do some deep dropping, but the storm came rolling in. So we kind of had to cut that short, but hey, we got one fish. That's all that matters. We got a beautiful sunset going on right now. My bees are working hard down there. I'm actually about to harvest some honey from them. Check it out, I'll zoom in on them. So the way that all those bees are bearded up on there right now means there's a lot of bees in that hive, which means there's a good chance that they're gonna split and half of the bees are gonna swarm away. And whenever that happens, I try to catch them and so I can start a second hive. So uh, if that happens anytime soon, I'm gonna try to videotape it because that's usually pretty interesting. Hey buddy. Look at Elliot down here. Don't ignore me. Elliot, how you doing? He's a little panther, a little Florida panther. Look at him down there. He knows not to mess with the bees. I think that's an instinct that most animals have. But thank you guys for watching this episode all the way to the end. If you made it to this point in the video, you're a trooper. And don't forget, if you like the PC fun, the crack in the electric reel that I was using, you can get 18% off with the code SFFC18. I'll link all that in the video description below. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and leave a comment because that really helps rank my videos up. So the more views I get, the more I can put back into this channel and put out more videos. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Cheers.